Hey everybody, Matt with Little Cash Homestead. Today, uh, the wheelbarrow is empty at the moment because I just dumped it, but I'm shoveling compost. Uh, we're redeveloping a, a garden, and so we're going to get some more nutrient in it, and then we're going to put more ground fabric on it, but um, we actually pulled the ground fabric up. Uh, this particular area was never developed, I just put ground cover on it and planted right into it. So, uh, as far as the no-till goes, well in this case, yeah, we tilled it because it was never developed. It was like, I need some more space, here's uh, some ground cover real quick and we'll we'll plant into it and we'll supplement with a fertilizer drip. But we want to, that crop is gone now and we want to get it uh, prepared and get another crop in there. So, uh, we actually did till it. We're going to put a, a good layer of compost on the top and then we're going to work that, uh, we'll put our, our fertilizer primers, our uh, amendments in there and then we're going to spin that down again with the uh, with the tiller and then we'll cover it back up and then pretty much from that point on it's going to be no-till. Uh, my theories on no-till are to here in in my part of Missouri the ground is just not very good. It takes a lot of work to get good soil and for six years I've been working on garden plots and some of them have really good soil now because I spent the time to develop them. But uh, that's one of the things we're doing today. So my theory on no-till. Yeah, you might have to break the ground. You might have to get it opened up and then uh, you know start getting your organic matter and stuff in there. And also, as you can see, there are leaves coming on down. So uh, anytime we do yard work, we take that mulch maker and we grind up all of our grass and leaves and whatever else is in there. And that gets piled on the gardens. And uh, like I said, in some of these gardens, we just pile it on there and and they've been they've been turned at the beginning you know so that would be a no-till garden in in my perspective okay i gotta get back to work hey everybody matt with location said we are putting wood ash we had a stump and we went around and collected all the deadfall put a heat shield around that stump we did a little prep to it with a chainsaw cut it down dug out around it a little bit cut uh checkerboards into it with a chainsaw and then this was last week and I know the kids did some footage of it I haven't edited all that any of that yet but so now we're taking all that ash and we're spreading it out on this uh, piece of garden here and that's going to give us a lot of trace trace minerals including uh, potassium mostly potassium we'll get a lot of trace minerals um, out of this whole thing and then we have another can um, you've seen me do it before where we take our uh, deadfall in yard waste and throw it in a garbage can and light a fire on it. Now, well, we did that to burn out another stump, and so we got a can full of charcoal, and then uh, we raked the ground up and scooped up all the ash on that. So when he, and you see my son's wearing a mask down there because breathing wood ash isn't really great for you. Um, when you're scooping it out of the stove is one thing, but when you're throwing it out on the garden on a windy day, that's another and then so we've got a can, it's got charcoal and ashes in it. We raked up the uh, ashes and, and scooped them all up, put them in this can. He's going to spread that on here as well. As soon as he's done with the wheelbarrow, I'm going to go back to shoveling compost and, and work on another area that were um, that was not previously cultivated. We grew in it and, and we did that by mounding the ground up. But the next crop that's going to go in there is a root crop as well. Um, and it's going to overwinter. That's going to be our elephant garlics. And that has to overwinter, so we actually spent some time really loosening that up. We had piled, and it's, let's just, I'll just go over to it right now. So he's got, and some of these things, as I was digging that uh, pit out, it, it, some of these uh, pieces of charcoal were actually on fire once I took them out, because they were covered in ashes, and, and as soon as I took them out, man, they just, poof, they started burning. So that's this area here. You can see we've already started piling yard waste. This is previously undeveloped and we're going to develop the area between the Caterpillar Tunnel and our commercial high tunnel there. Um, and we're going to develop this and, and this gets a nice uh, bit of shade so this will be good. Hopefully to extend uh, how long we can grow leafy greens. And so this area here and it had, and you see, it had like, I had some green potatoes and stuff because we didn't till this, we just mounded everything. And we got good, good uh, potato harvest, but you know, we didn't get them all. And so I'm gonna leave them in here and they'll just get eaten by worms. 
and just be a little bit of extra food and fertilizer. So in this area here, um, you know, we had a lot of compost and basically the way that I prepped it was I piled yard debris on it. Well then when we planted our potatoes, we just put our potatoes directly on that yard debris, uh, fed them, and then mounded them up. Well, once all the potato harvest was done, and then we planted beans between the potatoes, and so bean harvest is basically done. It wouldn't have been, I have a deer problem, um, so that's another thing in the future is to try and get some, some deer netting, and it's going to take a lot of deer netting, but try and get some deer netting around um, some of these different gardens. But in any case, so we did till this, and this here area here, um, up to, I think it was here, was all part of it. And then we started making new gardens here. This is where all that Sorgo Sedan was. The wind pulled my ground cover up, but then, you know, Sorgo Sedan and lawn waste and everything else gets piled on here. And that'll sit over um, over winter and over the fall. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I put a root crop in it or something, I don't know, but that ground is not, that ground was ridiculously hard even when we just were tilling it up just to get the Sorgo Sedan in there. We didn't get very far down in that. So piling this on here, I'm hoping that will bring some soil biology and uh, some earthworms and things like that to come eat this grass up as it decays and, um, you know, start softening that ground up and then we can try to get it cultivated and then once I do that it usually goes to for, to no-till from after there I develop the ground once pile it up with yard debris turn it in if I have to and then from there we just keep piling on top of it usually I like to let it decay over winter under some cover um, and and then from there we'll pretty much go no-till with it but you got to get the ground here in Missouri, it's, it's clay, it's clay. If you don't open it up and get some organic matter into it, you will have drainage issues. You have, I've, I've experienced that myself. So you have drainage issues, your potatoes will rot out, your root crops will rot out and everything because your water won't drain. So uh, this one, we had potatoes and, and uh, bush beans and stuff here. And so we actually did turn this, we turned in all the existing. And if you look at this, you'll see like right here, what's in my hand is last winter's yard waste <laughs> you know and we just piled it on and in this case then it gets turned under and then i gotta put a little bit of compost down this run because there was a uh, very little compost here because i did leave a little buffer i planted three feet away from the high tunnel or the caterpillar tunnel and there was a buffer there so we're gonna run some compost out of uh that pile there and we're gonna run some compost down this and then i'll get that turned in we're gonna put some extra nutrition and stuff in this area um, but again down there we expanded that garden but basically the way we expanded it was just uh, we whacked it down and then uh, covered it in ground cover and then we just put as we bored the holes out we put soil in the hole so it wasn't really developed and that's what we're doing now so we're develop it and then from there it will be no-till uh, that's what some of the things we're doing today. It's Matt with Little Cash Homestead. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Hey, everybody. Matt with Little Cash Homestead. So we got this whole general garden area here finished today, minus irrigation. Um, so we burnt our holes in here, and what we're planting is elephant garlic. Now, this bag of elephant garlic uh, came from Harris Seed. So here's the story. I went online to get it from Haas Tools. They were out, so I signed up for an email notification. In the meantime, I started looking for other suppliers, whether or not I could get it or not. So then I got this, and this is heavy. This is 80-something heads of elephant garlic that I got from Harris Seed Company. So, and then two days later, I got a ping from, uh, from Haas Tools saying, hey, we have it in stock, so I ordered some more. So this particular bag is coming from... Um, came from Harris Harris Seed Company and so I'm just kind of we're just sticking them down in here pointy end up right that's all there is to it leave the wrapping on and then what we'll do is we'll come and sprinkle fertilizer in each of the holes and then we'll, we'll uh, shake some compost onto it 
and then we'll sweep all this off because you don't want to leave dirt on top of this uh, ground control fabric because if you do then little grass seeds or whatever can get in that dirt and next thing you know you got weeds growing on top of your weed barrier so that's kind of an important thing to do so uh, I'm gonna get to work so basically I got this bag and then I got another 10 pounds that I got from Haas and hopefully I bored enough holes <laughs> Uh, but uh, if we can just get one bag in today, I'd be happy because it's getting kind of late. Well, it's about 3.30 or so in the afternoon. And uh, it's just been a busy but productive day today. So we're going to get on this, um, uh, planting this uh, elephant garlic. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Yeah, right there. Okay. So my daughter Serenity is planting elephant garlic with me. And she's going to show you how to do it. Pointy side up, push it down in the hole. It's that easy. Now this ground's nice and loose because we did we worked on this ground a little bit more. Honey, we got to scoot down. Okay. And that's it. Show them again, babe. See, just push it down in there, pointy side up. Not too deep, okay? And that's it. And this will overwinter. In fact, it won't even be ready until spring of 2021. There's a long grow on this. And we might throw some straw on top of it, but we'll see kind of how it goes. I'm hoping that the, the um, ground fabric will... That one will be a little too deep. Uh, I think it'll be okay, honey. You missed, uh, you missed one, babe. Okay, push it down just a little bit more. Twist it if you need to. There you go. And that's uh, how easy it is. We've already amended this ground. Um, put a lot of compost in it. And primed it out with some uh, 544. Or maybe a 453. I don't remember. But just some ge generic um, organic fertilizer that we had. And, and you I've... made it uh, 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 That fertilizer, no. No, I didn't make the fertilizer. I bought that. For, for our lives, for the plants in the uh, garden, you did. Well, I mix it up myself, yeah, a lot of it. Because I can get a custom blend based on whatever nutrients the plants need. These are going to require a lot of nitrogen and sulfur. Um, I did get... There's a whole uh, clover. Show them the clover. Look at So that's basically what elephant garlic is, and then we're just going to break this out. And this is seed is elephant big. garlic. Nope, you break it into pieces. Just break each piece up. Don't peel the wrappers off and just stick it down in the ground. Make sure the pointy side's up, that's it. That's all there is to it. Garlic is super easy. And for me, this elephant garlic was quite profitable. So we're gonna plant a lot of it. Uh, last, this season this, that just passed, uh, basically I was selling test beds. I, I always test bed something if I've never grown it. Don't peel the, there you go. I always test bed it. Uh, grow a little bit of it, see how well it does, see how it performs in my climate, see what I can get out of it from customers, and then if it's profitable, um, then I scale up. So that's exactly what we're doing here with the elephant garlic. It's Matt with the Low Cash Homestead, me and Serenity. Say hi, Randy. Hi. Our planting elephant garlic today. Thank you very much. Have a good day. What do you say, Renny? Have, have a good day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> good job, baby. Okay, so this is a 50-foot run, spaced every foot. You can grow elephant garlic closer to that. I have a tendency to do things on one foot or a foot and a half, and sometimes three foot. But in this case, we're just going to go ahead and run with the foot because the foot is a standard, pretty standard measurement that I can be able to use for potatoes and lots of other things. So if we redo this area later on with a different crop, then I still have that foot measurement. Okay, so 50 foot, three rows, that's 150 um, holes. We went through one bag. The blue bag is what we got from Harris. The red bag is what we got from Haas. So we still have a pretty good chunk of the Haas bag left. So uh, I spent uh, $200 on elephant garlic seeds. This one section alone will yield $450. And we're not even done planting. So you spend 200 bucks to make 600 bucks essentially. Um, that's kind of where we are because I get $3 a head out of these. 
As Matt with Low Cash Home said, that's our first set of elephant garlic, and we're gonna uh, go ahead and fertilize and bury these, and then try to get maybe another uh, row done so we can get that rest of that bag in, or maybe two rows. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So, 200 bucks earns you 600 bucks. This is Matt with Low Cash Home said, thank you very much. Have a good day. Hey, baby, you got some uh, cloves here on the ground, baby. We picked them up. Put them back in that bag so we can put them in where we... Okay, awesome. Thank you. What's that? What's that? It's not a clove. Oh, it's a wrapper for a clove. It looked like a solid clove laying on the ground. Okay, we're going to uh, sprinkle some fertilizer in here, and then um, we're going to cover them up, and then we'll just take a broom and sweep it all off. Or maybe we'll cover it up with the broom. We'll see how that plays out. Thank you very much. Have a good day. So we just tossed some compost over the holes and then all the dirt that was on there, what Rennie's doing is just sweeping it down and as we sweep it down, it's kind of filling in the rest of the holes. Okay, good. All right, we're out to put some more compost on top now, okay? Yep, more compost. All right, so uh, you can put some more compost on there, Kate? Yeah. Okay, put some compost on the holes. On the holes, Kate. Come on. Just... Okay, good. All right, so we're going to throw a little compost on there, sweep it down again. And that's how we're filling these in. Then we'll just take the broom and we'll sweep uh, the excess dirt off so we don't get weeds that grow on top of the, of the uh, ground control fabric. Okay, silly girl. I keep going in the camera one time once. I know. I was showing everybody Rennie working hard. Can I see? See? I'll hold the phone. No, because you. you keep putting your finger over the lens. Hey, yeah. Da -da. What? Kate, please. For, You're not I'm holding it because you keep putting your finger over the lens. the other part. No, not right now, babe. Okay. This is going to be loud. We're training Jose on using a chainsaw. That's my 1985 20-inch uh, pulling. Keep going. I'm talking. Picked it up in an engine shop for 150 bucks. Thing runs great. Watch that chain into the dirt. What, baby? Oh, you're fine. Get your feet away from underneath that blade. See how it's smoking? It's because you're buying the chain. Okay. That's good enough for now. Go chuck that stuff in the fire. Booyah. Booyah.